Well, good evening, Boris. Good evening. <laughs> and good evening to you, my dear fiends. Welcome to Monster Movie Night. I am your host, Bobby Gum Monster, along with my co-host, Boris T. Buzzard. <laughs> we want to welcome you to our humble home, horrible as it may be. <laughs> well, my dear Boris, what shall we show for our dear fiends tonight? Hmm? What do you think? What? Really? True, we haven't shown an Edgar Allan Poe film in quite a while, but you know, a lot of people have seen the Edgar Allan Poe films or the adaptations of those from the books over and over and over. But so I think I have a better idea, Boris. Tonight we will show an Edgar Allan Poe film that is connected with Ah, the Phantom of the Opera. Ah, ha, ha. It's called Murders in the Rue Morgue. <laughs> so, let us go over here. It's got uh, three of my favorite actors in it. Jason Robards, Herbert Lom, and Michael Dunn. <laughs> three scary fellows, I must say. So, let's go right over here now, and I will have it typed into the old internet haunted keyboard murders in the rue morgue jason robart michael dunn and herbert lom ah excellent excellent now let's see if we can't tune it in to the old internet haunted tv <laughs> begged for your kisses. Now you will beg for your death. Prepare, my darling, for pain. Exquisite pain. Eric! Get back, Eric! Eric, don't touch her! Eric! <laughs> Put her down, Eric! Eric! Here, gentlemen, the beast gone mad again. <laughs> there, there, kill it. She don't show it, don't show it. <laughs> yes, should I tell you, he'll kill her. Oh, <laughs> 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 
That dream again. You must learn not to fall asleep upon the stage. Oh, Caesar, don't joke. It was horrible.
Yes, you. Come. Do you want to make some money? Yes. Take this letter to the stage manager. But hurry, it's very important. Run. So now we have the real murder in the room morgue. Poor Eric. Such a senseless crime, Inspector Vidoc. Everyone liked him. Not everyone. You saw his face? Yes. It was horrible. Was it acid? Acid? The incredible thing is the killer's daring flamboyance to get into Eric's costume and actually appear on the stage. And I hear it was very good. That means the killer has to be a member of my company. Your wife? Uh, no, Inspector. That's Madeline's mother. Beautiful. Was she a performer, too? Yes, she worked for my company, but she died. Of course. How could I forget the sad death of Madame Fenelon? That, too, was a bloody death, wasn't it? That murder was solved, Inspector. Yes, of course. <laughs> Old Paris has turned into a carnival. I won't get it. I won't get it. I won't get it. I won't get it. Should be good for your business, Monsieur Charron. Yes. And so should this murder. Don't you see? Good day, Monsieur. Thank you. Orchids? From home. My secret admirer again. He left them at the door this time. Ah, these stage door lovers. Don't they know you're my wife? Wait a minute. Get on stage. Get on stage. Get on stage. Don't you feel well? I'm exhausted. Afraid to sleep. Afraid to dream, César. The dream will stop. I don't think it will. Not until I know its meaning. Curtain time! There is no meaning. Oh, it's curtain time. Good luck, darling. Break a leg. I 
almost burnt my hand last night. You realize that, don't you? And don't move at any time during my long speech, please. Yes, good luck, darling. Get your hat on, will you? again. Uh, the axe man, the rope, the falling body. I'll make you a sleeping draught. César, where is he? An urgent message came. He's got business in town. answer to a question. What is it? Do the dead come back? about Eric. Was he murdered? Yes. And Inspector Bedell confirms it. Why? Why would someone want to kill Eric? Except... Marot. Marot is dead. Dead and buried. Yes, I know, but... But Eric must have had a personal life. Some old enemies. But the acid. His face was burnt. The dead do not return, Jeanette. And... 
And how about old love? Uh, tonight's film, my dear fiends, is about, well, uh, uh, sort of adapted from uh, Edgar Allan Poe, but it's in the theater. I love the theater. I remember the roar of the uh, grease paint and the smell of the crowds, or is it the other way around? Either way, it's so chilling. <laughs> well, you know, tonight's feature with uh, Jason Robards, Actually, Vincent Price uh, wanted to do, to be this uh, this particular character that Robards is doing tonight, and but he, he and he was very disappointed not to have been included in the film. But uh, the director Gordon Hessler said uh, that um, he thought that. Vincent was uh, well was in fights, con uh, contractual fights with the um, American International Pictures, and so he thought they wouldn't be able to get him. Well, it's all they knew. But anyway, Robards was a, a, a big name at that time, and he hadn't done uh, any horror, so it was his turn at bat. And he he's been doing pretty well so far. What do you think, Boris? I think so too. <laughs> Let us go back to it right now. seen you before. Oh. Ah, I was on the stage, yes. But you find uh, this life better? Well... There are many ways to perform. Lie down. No, uh, in your room.
How could you know a woman like that? She wasn't always a woman like that. Well, when she worked for you at the theater, did you and no, she... No, darling, no. Jeanette was always a prim and proper person. Yeah. Until she changed her profession. Besides, I was in love with your mother. You and that other man, Moreau? Well, I expect we'll be hearing from Inspector Vidoc again. Another murder. You still didn't answer my question. You'll be late for the theater. Bye, darling. I'll see you at the theater. Slow it down. Thomas, we must hurry. We must go and save yeah. Madeline. Hello, She's Inspector. in great danger. All right, let's all go. Miss hurry, you. hurry. I was expecting you to call today. I see you read the paper, Monsieur Charbon. And I can read your mind, Inspector. You think I have something to do with the murder of Genoa Lafitte, the woman at Madame Adolphe's? She did work for you once. Yes. And you did visit her last night. For pure nostalgia. You understand, Inspector? Of course. Well, we might as well get it over with. You wish me to accompany you? Yes. To the morgue. To identify her body? No, monsieur. His body. An uncommon fine day, madam. On a day such as this, we should abandon city pursuits. Pack a picnic lunch. My, you're uncommon quiet for an actress. Or don't you talk to dwarves? There's not much to me, I admit, but I do draw attention to beauty such as yours, and doubly enhance it, as many a lady has found. <laughs> you know. No, what? We're not strangers. You wear my orchids. Oh. Yes, your admirer. I'm flattered, monsieur. Triboli. Pierre Triboli. Descended from royalty, of course. How so, monsieur? One of my ancestors was a court jester. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter is not foreign to you. Matter of fact, you laugh exactly as your mother did. You knew my mother. Yes, once I was her greatest admirer. And for that reason, madame, I have a friend whose endorsement would greatly further your career. And for such an endorsement? What would I want? Very little. You see, I want to help you. You should be a great star on greater stages. Just as your mother would have been if she had lived. Through you, she will live again. I have friends, madame. Yes, I have powerful friends. Au revoir. It's Jacques. Or should I say, what's left? Was an important member of your cast. Replacing Eric. The uh, almost human ape. Uh, was he any good? Not very. But he'd been with me a long time. Three murders in the room morgue, Monsieur Jaron. All three victims mutilated with vitriol. I would say the pattern is established. Wouldn't you? Pattern? I don't know what you mean. How? Pattern of vengeance, perhaps? But it's not possible, Inspector. It's just not possible. Nevertheless, if I were a member of your company, Monsieur Jaron, I will try to be very, very careful.
much to do. Please, everyone. Yes, Messieurs and Madame, the great Orsini will be buried in this very grave before your eyes. His coffin will be nailed shut. His grave will be covered with dirt. Talk to you, Luigi. I'm busy. Read. What's this to do with me? Between the lines, Luigi. Three of your friends were killed, so what? I was never your friend, Cesar. But you were a member of my company back then. During the days of Mallow. Moreau is dead. I know. You blame a dead man for this? No, no, of course not. It couldn't be. There's no doubt about his death, Cesar. We were both there at the grave. Yes. A dozen years ago. Cesar, stop blaming the dead. Luigi. The man has suffered enough. Wasn't there anyone else who knew Moreau then? Some relative or friend? I know nothing. Except my work. The Great Orsini! Thank you. 
How does he do it, Inspector? Do what, Aubert? Get buried alive. Practice. We have done the trick for 15 years. Once he did it for Monsieur Charon. But uh, you wanted to speak to Orsini. But obviously we arrived too late. Now we'll have to wait, Aubert. Three whole days. I gave her another sleeping powder. The dream again? Yes, monsieur, the dream. Monsieur, isn't there anything we can do? Like what? Well, a change of air, perhaps. Yes, you're quite right, Gabrielle. I'll see what I can arrange in the morning. Good night.
What is it? Dream? Nightmare? The man with the axe? Yes, and a house. And I'm running, and Greek columns, and, and big trees. But that was your mother's house. My mother's house? Yes, don't you remember? You lived there as a child. No, but why did I forget that house? Well, you were very young. And painful memories are better forgotten, Madeline. What happened to my mother? Let's not talk about death. But I want to know what happened with her and Maru. Perhaps it will help to explain my dream. Well, it happened in your mother's house, in her own theater. Theater? I can almost remember. Moreau was very much in love with your mother, but he was insanely jealous. One night, we were giving a play, a private performance for the Duchess of Orléans. Please, please help me. I've done nothing. Take my necklace. You have done nothing to me, madame. But you have caused my master great harm. What are you doing? You wouldn't, you wouldn't brand me. <laughs> Not I, madame. That is a pleasure reserved for the Duke himself. And then? <laughs> he would use this. What is it? Something to heal your burning flesh. Something gentle and soothing. Vitriol! <laughs> My apologies, madame. I was detained. All is in readiness, master. Then let us begin. At the beginning. Please. Please. Your grace. I implore you. No. 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 Yes, yes, my darling. If you deny me your beauty, then no one shall ever see it again. Kill the beast! Do Enjoying the film, my dear fiends. What a wonderful thing that they did with this film. They, they, uh, uh, a play in a movie <laughs> about the title of the movie 
and it's the title of the play. <laughs> uh, Murder in the Rue Morgues in the Rue Morgues Theater. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that was very charismatic and, and in, ingenious, actually. Uh, the film didn't do a lot at the box office when it first came out, but uh, it's since become a very, what they call a cult favorite. And, of course, talking about it being a, a a play within a movie, them being on the stage, it made me nostalgic for my days in the theater mm -hmm. and uh, applying the makeups, doing the parts, being a character, uh, what it, whether it was the villain or, or the leading man. <laughs> I usually preferred the villain. <laughs> and of course, you had to have your own makeup kit for the theater. I mean, they did have makeup artists. I was one of them. But most everybody needed to know how to apply their own makeups just in case. And uh, I fashioned my case from the great Lon Chaney Sr. Because uh, he, he created a lot of wonderful faces with his makeups. I mean, of course, you have your small mirror. <laughs> Ooh, well... Uh, uh, handsome fellow. Uh, uh, hopefully it didn't break it. And of course, you have your uh, creams, uh, the blood reds, and uh, we have uh, items to take off the uh, prosthetics and the makeup itself, uh, clown white, in case you need a very white ghostly face or a clown. And uh, of course, you have little brushes to brush rouges on and powders and things and there's what they call uh, mortician's wax or putty <laughs> and just so many other types of makeup grease paints and cake makeups cake it's what they call it when it's like this right here and uh, you it's it's caked in there and you rub it on your face and you apply it it takes a bit of practice and uh, of course I've been practicing for the last <laughs> 40, 40, 50 years. <laughs> One of these days I will get it right. <laughs> well my dear fiends, that's a little bit of nostalgia. And so let us go back to tonight's feature, Murders in the Rue Morgue. Real acid in the beaker. But why? No one knows. Lover's quarrel, perhaps. In any case, he wouldn't let us see him for weeks. We've all been frantic with worry and grief. We still don't know how it happened. The police are just as puzzled as we are. Yes. What is it? Can he hear? Can he speak? Oh, yes, sir. He can speak all right when he wants to. And he can hear everything. I want to talk to him by myself. See, no. I, I, I know what I'm doing. Don't worry, nurse. I shan't upset him. Moreau, there'll always be a place for you in the company. Don't forget, we're all old friends. Goodbye. God bless you. They're gone. They're gone. Just you and I. Lenny, why did you not allow me to visit you? To know that you're alive and not see you. How could you be so cruel? Do you remember what we said? in my dressing room, the very night it happened. I asked you to set a date for our marriage, didn't I? Well, I'm still waiting. Have you any idea, Madeleine, what I look like? No, you find yourself a husband with a face worth looking at. Handsome young lord, like Sharon. I hate handsome men. I hate them, do you hear me? 
All my leading men are handsome. Why else would a man want to, to look into the mirror night after night? All tailors, dummies, and empty hearts. All except you. Does it still, does it still hurt to touch? No. What do I care if your face is burned and scarred? I love you. Didn't you know that? Shortly afterward, he committed suicide. We're going away on a holiday, and you're going to forget all these dreams. again. City lies in terror. I've brought her mask. Excellent. Excellent. But I've had to bring someone else. Her lover. Phone. <laughs> it's all right, Fargo. They won't be missed. <laughs> Don't scream, my dear. He won't hurt you. It's only a sign of affection. <laughs> <laughs>
fainted. Uh, take her off, take her off. Emil, Emil, uh, go get Lucy. She'll have to go on. I'll quiet the town out. Uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Please, your attention. Due to a slight indisposition to our beautiful leading lady, we will take our first interval in the performance now. Just fatigue, I think. He hasn't been sleeping well. Bad dreams. What sort of dreams, Monsieur Charon? You investigate dreams too, Inspector. Only nightmares, like the death of Monsieur Orsini. Yes. Poor Luigi. You knew them all, didn't you? All the acid victims were once your employees, Monsieur Charon. It was coincidence. Or revenge. Could it be that the man who did the killing is trying to kill you, too? I don't know what you mean. Don't you, Jaro? Your ex-partner, Marot. Well, that's impossible. Marot is dead. I know. I was there the day we came to arrest him. physician pronounced him dead. And there is only one thing to do with a dead man. Maro was buried, but he was buried alive. No, that's impossible. Maro was mad. He killed Madeline's mother with an axe. He committed suicide. We all saw him. Yes. But the dead can walk, if you know the answers. How? A trick. A trick of shallow breathing. Practiced by the Fakirs of the Orient. Taught to Maro by his one-time friend, Orsini. It took hours. Hours of terror. But somehow, Maro found the strength to lift the lid of the coffin. It was the strength of a madman, because by now, Maro was completely insane. He had no memory of what had happened to him, but he had sense enough to cover the grave. And then? His coffin was moved, wasn't it? But where? I don't know. That's a pity, isn't it? If we knew, we could prove my theory. Couldn't we?
You're awake now. Oh, I can't bear it anymore. Let me call the doctor. The doctor can't help me. Nothing can help me. Except... Except what? The truth, Gabrielle. Where are you going? Get dressed. But it's very late. Get dressed and call a carriage. But where are you going? To town? To the house. A house? Please wait for us here. Please, madam. I can't wait. I'm losing business in the town. Madam, I don't like it here. It's very dark. Will you give me my fare, please, madam? I've engaged you for the return journey. Please wait. But, ma ma madam. Madam, please. My father built it for my mother to please her. Madam, I'm not frightened, but must we stay? Just another moment, Gabriel. That driver won't wait forever. Welcome, ladies. Well, we didn't think you'd come so soon. We? My powerful friend, madame. The one who wishes to help you. Please, please, don't hurt us. We don't mean any harm. Hurt you? Madame, I wish no harm to you. How could I harm the woman I love? Do I disgust you? Uh, I didn't disgust your mother. Stop it! Stop it! No, please! Oh. Stop it! Oh. Wait! I'm sorry! Wait! I didn't mean to hurt you. <laughs>
We knew you would come here sooner or later. We? My friend. Monsieur Marot. You're lying. Marot is dead. Marot lives. Ask your wife. Madeline. Here? She is lovely, monsieur. As lovely as her mother was. Where is she? Where is she? Where? Find Monsieur Marot and you will find Madeleine. En garde, monsieur. En garde. King Cesar. It's been a long time. Marrow. You look not so handsome, eh? But alive, Cesar. Isn't that all that matters? You won't be alive long, Marrow. Not after the police know. Must a man die twice for his crimes, Cesar? Must a man suffer twice? For the woman he loves. Get your hands off her. He's mad. Am I? No, Madeleine. He's the one, Madeleine. He's the one who killed your mother. Uh, no!
didn't worry. There was no murder. He already has a death certificate. <laughs> Murderers! Assassins! Killers! You killed him! I know you! One of you, help me! You kill that man, and you will pay for it! Life! 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 And now, it is your turn to die! to put him in his coffin. Madeline. Well, don't worry, it was only a play. Oh, it scared me. Oh, oh, oh. That's only, you know, a coincidence. Puppets in a play, Punch and Judy show. Cesar. He probably arranged for its delivery before. The more I learn about the past, the more puzzling your part in this misery gets. What's puzzling you, Inspector? You never told me you and Marot were rivals. Rivals? For Madame Fenelon's affections. It's true, uh, I was in love with Madeline. But uh, Moreau was the one she was really interested in. But she couldn't have loved Moreau and thrown acid in his face. Oh, you're wrong, Inspector. She had his body moved to the mausoleum, so they could be together even in death. No, Madeline. That can't be true. Why not? At least it's something we can find out. Yes? Shall we go? Don't you see what you've done? But he's there, Cesar. We put him there, didn't we? The body won't be decomposed. Aren't you coming? satisfied Moreau is dead and so are your theories yes what a pity oh but to lead him right there but as you see everything was all right still don't see how maybe maybe we dreamed everything and a man like Moreau just can't be killed that's nonsense yes of course let's go to bed no, I couldn't sleep. Do you want some sleeping powder? I have some. Yes. I won't need it tonight. Tonight, I could use it.
brought here, Cesar. How? Your wife gave you a sleeping powder. But you're dead. I felt your pulse. The great Orsini was a good teacher. Right away. Why? Why? What have you done to her? Hypnosis, Cesar. It was the only way to make her listen and understand. Understand? Understand what? The truth, Cesar. That it was you who put the real asset into the beaker. Now! Yes! You let the woman I loved disfigure me. But you never thought she would love me still, did you? That she would want to marry me, ugly as I am. Madeleine! Madeleine! She can't hear you. But you watch. Watch and see her understand. Madeleine, you're going back. You're returning to your childhood. Back through the years. Back? Yes. You're a child again. A child of seven. In this house. On this stage. On this stage? Yes. It's late at night. The stage is dark. It's so dark. You weren't frightened. It was all a game to you. But suddenly... You heard. You weren't supposed to come to the theater. Your mother was very strict. She never wanted you to know the nightmarish plans that were formed on this stage. But that night, you were there. Rene? Axeman of your dreams. You tried to put the blame on Marot. You tried to make us all swear that we had seen what Marot had done. But not I. I did not swear. No, not you, my little friend, but all the others. Eric, Genève, Orsini. They all swore I was guilty. But first I want to hear the truth. I want to hear you say it. Confess! Let me hear the truth, Cesar. Confess! Yes. I killed her.
Come on, everybody. Hurry up. Curtain in one minute. Are you sure you want to go? Yes, I want to. I must. My dear fiends, please subscribe and hit like on my YouTube channel. Spread the word and let's scare the uh, world with monsters on Monster Movie Night. <laughs> and as always, keep screaming. You shouldn't worry, Madeline. Everything will be all right. Look, I will wait outside your door while you change. 
Call me the second year ready and I take you out. I've come for you. I've had my revenge, but it's not enough. I need... I need love. Madeleine! 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 <laughs> Thank you. 
Hurry up. Break down the door. on after death. <laughs> well, my dear fiends, that was some ending, eh? <laughs> Michael Dunn, he might have been a small person, but he had lots of chilling charisma. <laughs> In fact, he was actually a wonderful singer. And, uh, and he sang in a lot of his parts. And tonight's feature film, he was, well, he got to play, well, a regular human being. Most time, uh, in other films, he got to play well. He, he, he was either mute or he, he was some sort of creature or, uh, or put down for his size or, or many, many things like that. But in this film, he was treated like any other human being in any other character. And it was 
great to see. <laughs> and of course, he could put a chill with that wonderful smile of his. <laughs> well, my dear fiends, it's that time again. Uh, time to say good night. <laughs> I, uh, time for Boris to go back to his perch and I back to my coffin. Mm -mm. Well, until next time, my dear fiends, as always. <laughs> Keep screaming.